Welcome, everyone. This is a podcast about the theory of Tartaria or the old world. I'm here with my friend, the Bully Slayer, or Shat, uh, as he's also known. And I guess we just wanted to discuss the topic of Tartaria further and really go more into detail about what the theory actually presents and what it actually means. Um, so without further ado, for the people that may not know what this theory actually is, Shat, do you have any few words that you want to you wanna say about it? Yes. So, um, Tartaria or the Tartarian Empire. Um, a lot of people uh, get it mixed up. They um, they relate it to what the Europeans used to say about Tartaria. You know, they say Tartaria was an unknown region in the Asian region. The Mongolians they didn't know what it was, but we've come to find out that uh, the Tartarian Empire actually was an an advanced empire that span across almost the whole world, not just in Russia and not just in uh, Asia. So, um, yeah, Tartaria is a one world, um, you could say a one world civilization that basically built up many of these structures that we've inhabited today. All right. I think um, I wanted to actually, it's perfect that you said that because I wanted to ask a question when it comes to it, because, you know, I think the, the term Tartaria, it really describes that civilization and it's like a used term in this community. But I think it is quite difficult to like nail it down to say like these were the Tartarians. Like I know that Putin talked about it, for example, like in it's been eradicated from history. Like it's this huge empire, like even on old maps, it is huge. Yeah. Um, but it's it's so do you really think that they are the Tartarians or is that just like a term that you also use? Um, what do you mean by you think they? Who, who is they? I I mean in the sense of like past civilizations that build all these monuments. Like, are they the Tartarians, or is that just a name to describe well, them? I it guess. could be. It could be a name to describe them, um, because what we understand is a lot of names have been changed over time, but. Um, we do like to say it is the Tartarians because that makes us understand exactly who we're talking about. And for the people in America, um, they will be state capital buildings. Those state capital buildings are all over the world. It's the same architecture. Um, it's the same type of structures. And, you know, they give the same, the, the mainstream narrative likes to say, oh, it was just because people like to build like that. But you have to understand, we're talking about completely different empires supposedly across two three different continents and yet they've still got the same art, art um, architectural design so um yeah i believe the tartarians uh was definitely real um there's so much evidence um relating to them and the more you dig in the more you'll see this for yourself yeah yeah i completely agree i mean i remember it was such a weird moment for me because i studied ancient history for like two and a half years and I was into it you know I was really into Graham Hancock Randall Carlson and then all these different theories about how our ancient past is so different like ancient Egypt is way older and there's a lost civilization but when I came across Tartaria man I remember I was just dumbfounded like I was I was sitting there and I couldn't believe it yeah. and I watched a couple of videos on world fairs which I think we'll talk about that in, like in later fashion too but yeah. man it, my whole like perspective on history switched and i remember i remember i was um so i heard about the theory and i had a date later that day and i was watching like tartaria videos for like hours and then i go to the state and i'm just like man you know and we're walking through like through lisbon and they're like crazy buildings everywhere and now i have this like new perspective and i look at these buildings like bro like i couldn't contain myself it was a very strange day um and i think <laughs> it's yeah. once you realize that like the foundation of history may really be a complete set of lies mm. you can't unsee it it's the ultimate red pill in matrix yes it really is and um at first like i was the same i used to i was never really interested in history but i i, I remember what they taught me and you know there was all these ancient places you know the aztecs the mayans the egyptians the romans but then when you start to look at some of these old uh cathedrals or some of these old just even some of these old buildings um 
they are ancient. You know, they're, they're well older than what we've been told. They're just so well built that it's hard to even tell when it was even made. And it messes up the whole time frame of what we know. So we don't know if it was before. We don't know if it was during. We don't know if it was after. Because, um, you know, the bricks back then were so different. It's not the same type of bricks we use now. You know, these bricks would last for years. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, definitely. So I, I grew up in Germany and we have a lot of Roman ruins, you know, yeah. and to even imagine that there are bridges out there that have even according to mainstream story that have just stood there for 2000 years and can still be walked on. Right. Yeah. It's just OK. If we build a bridge today, that thing crumbles in 60 oh, years, like yeah. it needs repairs. It's like a complete mess. And they just built bridges that lasted eternity. And that's just how how would we be able to even get back to that level it's a completely different art yeah it's a different civilization a lot of people don't want to believe it and they say it's about money it's about um you know fast produce you're wasting money if you have to keep repairing that same bridge every year you know so it's not about money it's about not having that same knowledge and that same understanding and, you know, that's where the reset comes in. And that's where, you know, all of these buildings that we see have been inhabited. Um, and obviously we'll talk about the mud flood uh, later on in this podcast. But, um, yeah, it is just crazy how long these buildings have lasted for. And we just can't build like that today. Yeah, yeah. I think you also hit a good cue. Let's get into some visual evidence for this. Yeah. Because um, it, it, this is a theory that I feel like if you just talk about it without really seeing pictures, it's very difficult to understand. Definitely. So let me put this picture up here because I think it represents uh, the theory of Tartaria quite well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have any words for this? So yes. Yeah. So for the people that don't understand what we're actually saying. So you have the empire called Tartaria. And they have built many structures all over the world that look just like this, if you notice what that looks like on the top. But then there was a cataclysm, what we call the mud flood. So in theory, almost every building that looks like this has about three, four, five levels buried underneath. Buried. So yeah. if you look closely, you can see that, you know, we're not walking on the, on the top level. You know, the top level, the real ground level is way down there. And um, what we did was go to these places, dig them out, and basically, uh, what's the word? Um, renovate and restore. And it's where they get the word founded from. A lot of people like to say foundation. Yeah, you know it, but Doc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I was going to bring that up next. <laughs> yes, they say we founded this in 1858, and you have to notice the dates. It will always be in the 1800s where they rinse this word "founded," because they literally found these buildings empty and restored them and dig them out. So, um, if you saw the next picture, oh, you got something yeah. to say about this? Yeah, yeah. this picture here. I this mean, is what we mean. This is a real cathedral now, people. And you can see that window is buried underground. This is not a basement. They didn't build it like that. The building didn't sink. The building was actually covered, like we showed you in that last picture, in mud. And what we do is we dig it out, renovate it, and then we claim it for ourselves. So if you notice the brickwork on this again, this is ancient structures. You can barely put a date on these buildings here. Yeah. Ancient work. Ancient. And they always use some form of sacred geometry in their buildings. Yeah. It's very interesting. You have mythological themes, like you saw in the first picture, the amount of columns, the huge windows, and always these very perfect shapes. Like there's nothing left to coincidence. Yeah. It's planned out. It's beautiful. It's created with love. Yeah. And... You have these buildings in your city. Like, even if you live in a small town, look mm. at the town hall, the church, maybe schools. There mm. are buildings that look, have the same aesthetic and the same look. 
that just have that appearance of someone actually cared about yeah. creating these. Not yeah. as we are today that we just, you know, we shit these buildings out of the ground yeah. and it's just a <laughs> rectangle. Yeah. A colorless rectangle. Yeah. And it's 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 sacred geometry that they was using. And you know, they always had bells, organs, because they used to use the Tartarians used to use sound frequency for healing. So <laughs> originally they say the theory is that these windows that look like that didn't even have glass in them they used to use it like a sort of like a speaker so they would play sound through the, these these so-called windows and they would heal the town it was great like we're gonna go deep into this people don't worry but yeah, what yeah. Will be explained this, this is like this is the tip of the iceberg like the bit yeah. like the picture you first saw that was the beginning and it goes so deep and it's so crazy to first get into it and understand. And then it just opens up this whole new reality with free energy, sound healing and all these things. But we got to start at the foundation, you know, where we foundation. found it. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> Let's go to the next image here. And I think that shows it quite well too. Yeah, like, this is, this is perfect. So, um, with this one here, they was actually building a car park and they started to lower, they started to dig into the ground. And when they did it, this is when they've realized that that's not the original front door. The original front door was buried under the ground. So it's not a mud flood. They didn't, I mean, it's not, a, um, what was I going to say? It's not a basement. It's not a lower foundation because a lot of people say, yeah, they built solid foundations. You can see the windows on the ground. You can see the door on the ground. And many of the buildings all over the world are exactly like this. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a high chance you have buildings like that in your city too. And yeah. if you look at windows closely, there's a high chance that you will, you'll find some. Some buried windows. Yeah. And this is just another one. So again, uh, They've dug up the ground for some reason here. And you can see entrances, buried windows, buried doorways. And nobody knew that was there. A lot of people say, well, surely you could have accessed it from inside the house. What people don't know is that when they started this reset and this these foundations, they seal it off. So they seal it off because the, the bottom level was too damaged you know, from the mud flood. So the bottom, the first level floor usually is too damaged for repair. So they seal it off. So it's not like you can actually always access these places. Yeah. And what is crazy about that, like, I think the, the biggest case or the best place to talk about the mud flood is the United States of America, because it's the young country. Like historically yeah. speaking, there yeah. wasn't supposed to be anything there yet. Mm -hmm. If you look into it, like most American cities, even small towns, have an underground level to them. Yeah. Like, why are there storefronts beneath the ground in like Wichita, Kansas, or Indianapolis? Yeah. They shouldn't be there because it's a young city, yeah. and people forget that they're there and then they rediscover them, which yeah. is so strange because the city is like what 250 years old maximum, so they you know? Say. Yeah, and so they say. It's ridiculous. We have a couple of more here, and I think that is a good example here too. This is Seattle, okay. right? And it's just like, what is even happening? What What are these weird mountain-looking buildings, or like not buildings, but just structures? Yeah. And you have a house in between. Yeah. The remains of Denny Hill. It's it's fascinating and. You have that a lot in old images, and that's something I wanted to get into too. This is an image, also Seattle, apparently 1886, yeah. after the Great Fire. And yeah. that is a common theme when it comes to Tartaria, that most cities had a huge fire or earthquake in the 1800s. Yeah. And for some reason, these fires destroyed completely stone brick buildings. I mean, look at these. Yeah. These are clearly old world, huge windows, and it's stone. Yeah. Why does a building like that get so damaged from apparently just fire? And it's in all of the cities. They've all got the same, same story. There was a fire. Uh, there was an earthquake. There was just something that went down and destroyed all the buildings. But when you look at the pictures of the destruction, you're like, 
that looks like the pictures of World War Two. Like, yeah. what, fire did this? Like, yes. a fire burns brick. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And in San Francisco, they had a story, like, San Francisco's builders, uh, like, uh, pictures similar to this. And there they say they tried to fight the fire with dynamite. So it's yeah. like, what are we even, like, the people that supposedly built these Mom, structures decided to say, oh, you know, let me shut. Let me just throw some dynamite at that what's, building what's and see what happens. That? What, where was that? Uh, uh, San Francisco. San Francisco. I mean, come on, people. This is where, I mean, you don't even need critical thinking on this one. You're fighting fire with dynamite. Does that even <laughs> sound realistic? And, and the funny thing is, like, there was a time people believed this. It's like um, the fire of Chicago. Um, they blamed it on a cow, you know, they said a yeah. cow knocked over a lamp and that lamp destroyed the whole of Chicago in one night. Like, <sighs> just don't working, make sense. It doesn't. It really doesn't. I'm working on a video in Indianapolis right now or just like a, a short snippet on it. And yeah. there they say that a pigeon flew over the city with a lit cigarette butt and dropped it on a house, which turned the brick house into, <laughs> you know, rubble. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> it's Terrible. ridiculous. You have more in here? Oh, this is an interesting one. I love this one. This is the Capitol building, I think, in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And it, you can, like, what is this beneath the staircases? You know, you have, like... Some whole structure under there. That This reminds me of the first picture that we I showed you as the example of yeah, what is yeah. under these Capitol buildings. And again, they'll say... Um, you need a solid foundation because the buildings sink. And I don't know about you, but I don't remember the last time my house just started sinking overnight. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you really think about it, like, yeah, buildings sink in the in the soft mud. And you're like, really? And they're like, yep, yeah. yeah. And you say, well, well, the pyramid's not sinking. You know, all of these ancient temples all around the world ain't sinking. So, yeah, what we believe, again, is... Um, the Tartarians, they actually went to um, America. They was in America also. And all of these structures you see here are Tartarian. And that's why they was all buried and they've just been rediscovered or founded. Yeah, that's a good That's a good way to say it, founded. This is, this is also a picture that shows it very well. I think this is also in America, but you just see how much rubble is everywhere. Does yeah. this look like a freshly like built city? Like this looks like, I mean, I don't even have words for this. You know, they are looking like they're digging things out. Everything is all over the place, but it doesn't look like a built city. Definitely, it's the reset. All right, I guess that's a good introduction to like what the buildings are really all about. Yeah, I have a, I have since you mentioned it, I did have something I wanted to show you about Lisbon. Yeah. Um, and so Lisbon is the city I'm currently in, Lisbon, Portugal, and yeah. they have this very interesting building that I also wanted to share because I don't, I don't think you've seen it and I'd love to hear your take on it. And, um, you know, since I, I did a lot of uh, research here in Lisbon because it's just, you know, if, if I'm here, might as well already. So this yeah. is, this is, uh, <laughs> one of the biggest squares in Lisbon nowadays. This is an old depiction and oh. What I want to pay attention to is this building, right? This building right here. This is like 1680, I think, this engraving. Also wow. beautiful painting, but this building right here, all the stretch. And if we see further, this is like an engravement, like 1700, same square. This is, this is the building. Yeah. So in 1755, there's an earthquake in Lisbon that destroyed... 50% of the city, it, like it, first the building started crumbling, then there were fires everywhere, and then there was a tsunami. I think yeah. a third of Lisbon's population died on that day. Um, but what I find interesting is this palace here is they say, of course, it was destroyed during the earthquake. Now, let's take a look at that building, like at this place today. What does it look like today? We have... This building over here, you see the same arches that you've just seen in the in the pictures before. Yeah. The same tower. 
And even if we look further, the same little bend that it had, it added some very impressive monuments here on the side. I mean, just the size of it is ridiculous. Yeah. But this building, was that really destroyed in 1755 and then rebuilt exactly the way that it was? Like, that just seems so unlikely to me. This is one of the main narratives they give for all of these buildings. They always say it was destroyed, then it was rebuilt, or it was moved, and then it was rebuilt. And they'll say that about three or four different times and give you three or four different dates. And the reason why they do that is so it's hard to trace when it was actually built. You know, I've, I've Googled many structures before and they've given like three or four dates in three or four different places. Like, oh, the original site was there. Then they moved it brick by brick to another place. And you're like, really? And it's like, yeah, that's how much they, they love that building. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> like, <Yeah>. Really? <laughs> yeah, but they didn't have TikTok back in the day. They you know, didn't have TikTok. <laughs> they didn't. <laughs> they weren't looking on their phones, and it's like, come on, man, that's not a realistic answer. And we're doing all of this with hammer and chisel. Like, wow. Yeah. It's like, yeah, people were stronger back then. They ate more protein. It was in. The, <laughs> it was in the water, and you're like, come on, man, just, just, yeah. just think about it. You know, don't jump to a conclusion. Especially, think. yeah, no cars, you know, they didn't even have the same transportation methods. We're talking about people that had a horse and a wagon. And yeah. then you're telling me, oh, let's move this building across the country. Let's yeah. take this building and ship it to Europe. You know, it's <laughs> like, what are we saying? Why well, is this the official story? <laughs> I know. And it's so, it's so crazy because it's like, we wouldn't have questioned it. Nobody usually questions these things. We get told about it in school and we think, well, why would they lie? They've got no reason to lie. And it's like you're almost trusting um, human as if human is a god or something like, you know, humans don't lie. Who are, Only bad people lie. And you think, you know, you, your government or whoever it is, you don't expect them to lie. And it's like, even that's naive. That alone is naive. It's like, oh, you thought they were told the truth. Ah, oh, well, I've got some bad news. Everything's a lie. <laughs> no, not just one bit. And it's obvious as well, because the people that we're saying have created this false narrative, they are the same people that was committing mass genocide and, and conquering lands, apparently. So it's not like they was genuine good Christians. You know, we're not talking about good-hearted people. We're talking about people who wanted to put themselves at the top and say there was nobody else as great as them ever. So that is another reason why the lie is in place, is because people want to be superior and they don't want to give true, um, what's the name, true respect to the previous civilizations before us, you know. It's like, it, it, I feel like they also give clues because the best place to hide the truth is really like to tell a really big lie. The bigger yeah. the lie, the harder it is for people to like start believing the opposite, yeah. right? It's like that idea. And if, if you look at these words, like govern mind, like government, it's like they yeah. control the mind, you know? Yeah. Parliament in French would be parlar mentir, which is like speak lie. And that's parliament, you know? Okay. And you have a lot of these words that are like super like founded, you know, it's yeah. right in our faces, right but in our we face. don't question it. Yeah. We just don't take it as it, it is. Yep. It's crazy as well. I mean, you know, when, when you try and explain to people exactly what's going on, um, it doesn't click straight away because it, it's like you said, the bigger the lie, the harder it is to catch. And, you know, it's almost like, um, I don't know if they do it um, in Lisbon or where you're from, but in England, they do this thing with the bank and, and your housing. They say, let me know your past five addresses and you've got to trace your past five years of, of addresses. It's a bit like that with history and their lies. They've started the lie from the Big Bang. So their lie continues from the beginning. So they've got the Big Bang, they've got the cavemen, they've got the dinosaurs, everything leads up to but we're the most advanced now, you know, so nobody before us was advanced because they haven't evolved yet. 
you know? So it all fits into, every life fits into place. So the minute you crack one of their codes, the minute you start to like, wait a minute. So the asteroids killed the dinosaurs. How do you know that, bruv? <laughs> was you there? <laughs> you know, the minute you crack one of the lines, you're like, okay then. So if they wasn't so advanced, how did they carry the limestone from five miles away? You know, yeah. Like, these guys are stronger. Are they on steroids? Like, who are these men? <laughs> you know what I mean? So once you crack one of the, the lies, it all it just all crumbles down bit by bit. But um yeah. It definitely, it's like, uh, I think it's still crazy that Napoleon Bonaparte, one of the most famous figures in history, has this quote, history is just a set of lies agreed upon. We're talking about the French emperor, like he's literally in charge of a country and that's something that he said, you know, and I wasn't there, who knows, even that could be a lie, you know, <laughs> but the point is, we need to question it and we're not here to say this is how it was. But yeah. it's important to ask. And if we're not allowed to ask, then that raises even more questions. Yes. Because yeah. how strange is that for society if we can't really investigate our own heritage? Where yeah. do we come from? Yeah. And it's like you said, and I think you you really hit a good note with that, like all those ancient civilizations. I'm not like even pre-Tartaria, because I think the pyramids is something that's older than the yeah. cathedrals that we see. Yeah. Yeah. Even them, like the amount of like, precision that went into that, like they and I, I really like ancient history was my jam for some time that they yeah. brought a specific type of granite from 800 kilometers away, 800 kilometers away. They brought that somehow. We don't know how. And then they lifted it up like 70 meters and put it like this 80 ton granite block, just put it there in there perfectly. And we're talking about like people that were supposedly, you know, did hammer and chisel work yeah. and that were just dragging them. Imagine, slaves. imagine slaves like, yeah. you know, carrying an 80 ton granite block. We can't pick that up with modern equipment like that. Like, this is an operation that would take us yes. so many millions. Like, this is crazy. And they just did it for 800 kilometers. And we take it, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, sure. Slaves. I mean, even with the whole slaves, you say it was the slaves. It's like these malnourished slaves who was living for three days. Yeah, have carried this limestone in the heat. Yeah, they must be thirsty, and they've carried that eight hundred kilometers away. Then they get this special rope because it's got to be the most super rope we can ever imagine because the rope would snap. Because you've had to lift it in the air. And then when that slave dies, another one just takes his place. Like, yep, it's my duty now. It's my turn. I know what to do. I've seen it. And I'm going to chisel away as well. It's like, how skilled are these people? And yeah. this, is where, this is where we get into sound vibration and frequency. Because uh, well, what I personally believe is with the pyramids and other structures like this, they was using sound vibration because sound and vibration can make things move and levitate. This is the only explanation that we can possibly think of at the moment. There might be other ways, but um, we definitely believe they had a lot of techniques and a lot of advice. I mean, even with the pyramids, they somehow aligned them with the stars in the sky. I mean, come on, man. You got without any modern day equipment, you got to be a genius or you had some advanced technique that we didn't know about. Oh, there's for no sure. You couldn't, you couldn't guess it. You could have guessed that. No. And I think there's so many evidences for that, especially sound and frequency. I think one of the best ones is El Castillo, which is also known as Chichen Itza in Mexico, where this, this famous thing where if you clap in front of it, you just clap in your hands. The, the building echoes the sound of the Quetzalcoatl bird. So if you clap with your hands, the pyramid speaks back to you in the sound of the bird. Wow. Imagine oh, building wow. that. And yeah. we're talking about people that we say didn't have a wheel, right? Yeah. Like all those like South American, co they didn't even have a wheel. It's like, okay, they were just chilling. And they somehow figured out a way to create an echo 
of yeah. the bird sound when you clap in your hands ridiculous and and people look at that like oh it was just a bird it's just a bird come on i mean imagine you sitting down and saying you know what i'm gonna build a building and i'm gonna show off my skill by making it sound like a bird you've got to be highly highly experienced and skilled to pull that off and then that's just almost like an eye opener or a window into what other stuff they possibly could do do you know what I mean? Because yeah. if you can do that, what else could you do? Because that sounds like somebody's showing off. It, oh, definitely. And I think a big, another big point of that, especially also in the terms of Tartaria, is water. The yeah. way they were able to use water systems, the yeah. way they build canals, and the way they were able to just have, even like in ancient times, like, uh, Sigi Raya, like Lion's Rock in Sri Lanka. It's this like huge rock fortress on top of a mountain. And they still have a working water pumping system that somehow transports water up the mountain. And we're talking about something that's like thousands of years old. And we have that, like Netherlands is a great example for that, where they have so many canals that you also need to ask yourself, okay, like maybe this is less skilled labor, like it wasn't statues or, or something of that nature. But how many kilometers of just digging without any type of machine was done in order to make these canals that's crazy yeah yeah and i i get it sometimes people say you know they worked harder back then you know they never had facebook i, I understand the theory but you just gotta be realistic with it and be like but how did they build it <laughs> <laughs> come on you go because it's like wow like how did they really do it? They said, yeah. Sometimes you just got to put your hands in the air and say, I don't know. It's okay to say, I don't know, you know, people. You know, nothing wrong with that. That's how you get to the truth. And that's how you get to the answer. By raising your hand and say, I don't understand. Can, I, can somebody please help me? So, um, yeah, it's just, it's. I love it. I love all of this stuff. And we're going to be going in deep. It's just the intro, people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Going in deep. Because this is like, as soon as you, and it really takes time to eternalize or like internalize uh, that knowledge where you see these things and you process it and you're kind of like, okay, hold up, wait a minute. There's something that is kind of strange about this theory that makes more sense than what we're currently being told. Mm -hmm. And when you reach that point, you open this like way that opens your eyes to a whole new set of possibilities because now you look at ways how they could have done it like sound frequency vibration yeah. i think another great introduction piece for this would be um the world fair yes. and i have i have like just a couple of pictures here prepared uh, about the chicago world fair in 1893 and that is one of the most famous examples i guess yeah. And this is this is just like the the map, the overview of uh, bird's eye view of the world's Columbian Exposition, Chicago, eighteen ninety three. Yeah. I mean, look at first of all the sheer size of this. Just yeah. take it in for a second before knowing anything about the story that they tell us. Take it in the size, and even you know the canals, the waterways, like how much, like just how many buildings are here, and now. Yeah. Yeah, you have something? I mean, wow. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say straight off the bat, people. The Chicago World Fair and all of those World Fairs was them showing off the last reset. They were showing off the last civilization's tech because there is no way in just the matter of, what, four years? How, how long did it take to build this one? Uh, this one, three years. <laughs> three All of this. Okay, three years. Let's do the maths and the science. Three years to build something like this. You have to understand, you've had to dig out canals, okay, to get water in there. So this was meant to be just all land and, you know, nothing's there. They've dig out to make water wells. Then they've started with the structures. Um, give me some information on the structures. Yeah, so uh, so what you see here are, in total, they built 200 buildings. Yeah. And the official narrative here is that all of these were built out of temporary materials, there right? 
So the story is they built all of this in three years. And then they had the fair where people came to visit for six months. And afterwards, it was supposed to be destroyed. And it burned down, actually. That's the official story here. But, I mean, if this is temporary material, right, then yes. having water right next to it seems like a pretty bad idea. And also, if this is temporary material and you can make it last for six months without any concerns of anything breaking, that's pretty phenomenal. Why don't we use that more often if, if our bridges don't last 60 years anyways? Yes. And to give some context, these are the buildings that we're talking about. Do, the, do these look like temporary buildings? Like, okay. like from the shoreline, the bridges, temporary bridge? Or how are you going to put that in water? Like just the, the detail. And this looks like Rome. This is, this is Chicago. This is America. This is supposed to be a miracle. And they say that, you know, about, I think it was about 19 different countries all got together and worked on it. And where we caught them out is the Museum of Fine Arts is still standing today. And they've changed the narrative to say that, oh, they just decided to knock that down and rebuild it. So the reason why the Museum of Fine Arts is solid stone is because they rebuilt it. So you're telling me you've knocked down everything and you thought you know what i'm just going to rebuild uh, the museum of fine arts because i want to to tell you the truth the museum of fine arts was one of the smaller buildings that they decided to keep because the rest of them was too grand and i think they knew that we was going to figure it out after a, a few years because it's like why would you build this for a fear yeah. and then knock it down you say exactly this is also one of the first fairs that had electricity so at night this was all lit up yeah. Uh, which is even wilder. There's another picture that just shows the grand scale. I mean, look at the people in comparison. You know, like that statue look is still there. The you know that statue is still there. The statue is still there. The statue is still there. I done a video about this on um on, on my TikTok, and people from Chicago was telling me the statue is still there. So I googled it, and the statue is still there. So it's not temporary, people. <laughs> yeah, very temporary. And, but it, Does that look like a fear? Think about all the fears you've been to, people. Yeah, you know, Disneyland. Does that look like a fear? Right? There, was a, there was a few rights, but that's, you wouldn't be building statues out of fear. Who, who's the statue of? Who's building statues now? <laughs> And this is like, this to me really looks like, they called this the white city because every yeah. one of these buildings was like white, you know? Yeah. And it just looks like, to me, this is really, this looks like what Rome is supposed to look like. <laughs> and like you know, it's like Caesar or something, you know, some Roman yeah. emperor and you have all these like Roman buildings next to it. But this is yeah. Chicago in 1893. Yeah. And the reason why it was white is because they actually spray painted it white. They got this new supposed spray paint, especially for this, and spray painted all the buildings white because then you couldn't see how old it really was. You know, they made it look brand new. Yeah, so it looked brand new, like, wow, but it was ancient. It was That ancient. makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I didn't hear about the spray paint, but this actually, that, yeah, that makes the sense. Paint. They made some new spray paint for that one. Sprayed all the buildings. Yeah, it's crucial, man. Yeah. Got to make him look nice and shiny. Yeah. And they certainly did. And then knocked him down. Yeah. yeah. And man, this is really, this is the tip of the iceberg. And you can, it's so much fun. Like, and I think, you know, us too, like we, we've done this for the past months, years, you know, just like trying to find out more and researching and you can fall into such rabbit holes no matter what building you really look at that was built in that time frame, like 1800s and before until like 1940 sometimes, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. You hear these stories, you read them, and you ask yourself the question, like, does that really make sense? I mean, America at 1893, that World Fair, that was like, I mean, I don't know that much about supposed American history, but, you know, the Civil War is also something that pops up in America every now and then. Yeah. So even financially speaking, a lot of these fairs actually made losses, which seems yeah. like a very weird business model. Yeah. Yeah. 
Like who who who's the project manager? Who is who is not overseeing this project? Because you know you've lost so much money. Like why would you not down a fair? Like why don't you just build it and then keep it? Like and then six months, like it took longer to build. You know, so yeah, the whole I, I always say this: America and Australian history have the worst. Um, the worst narratives. When you look into their stories of both of their countries, apparently nothing was ever there. Everybody was in huts, running around wild. And then these guys, these English, Europeans and French come in and then wham, all these massive structures. And you're like, do you know how long it would take to actually really build some of these cities? San Francisco is another one. Like how quick, and, this, and you look at any old picture the whole city is completely built. No construction photos, um, some fake, fakest construction photos where you see a bit of scaffolding on the top of the building, but you would never see the empty space and then them slowly building it. Never. Then they will always say it was founded in 1853. Yeah, exactly. And I, I want to shout out Mind Unveiled, who's also a great researcher on, uh, on YouTube. And they have made a great video about um, like old world Photoshop. So like the idea that many of these pictures are actually staged. Yes. And it, they, they brought up a great point that many of those old cards you could buy in cities actually use the same sky. Yes. And you could layer over pictures. And I know that myself because I studied analog photography actually. And yeah. there in the course, like we, we would put films like on top and you could like change the way, like you could exchange exposure levels by creating masks. There's so much you can do with a photo without any digital tool, just by the tools that you have. Yeah. And it's a practice that goes back, like it basically as far as photography itself. So yeah. of course we use a lot of old world pictures to also highlight the grand scale, but Pictures are flawed. Yeah. And that's the yeah. same thing with writing. If you think about like the European worldview was so much focused on having the like the truth be in the books. But what is a book? It's just a written down thought. It's a written yeah. down story. And where's yeah. the difference if you have indigenous cultures who have their oral version of that story and you have the Western, the European version where that story has been written down? Yeah. Where is really that difference? Yeah. Right. It could have been like faked. It could have just been written in a different time. There's yeah. no way of really knowing, but we take these sources and a book means it's the truth. And if someone tells it orally, it's a lie, you yeah. know, pictures is the proof. Like, but it, there's so much, especially nowadays with AI images, right? Yeah. The, the things people can create. And we need to just ask questions, but also be uncertain about everything, in my opinion, because it doesn't really get us closer to the truth. I agree. I agree. And I've seen the, the photoshopped images where the sky has been whited out. Um, people have been put in place. Like most of those old photos have been photoshopped and most of them have been photoshopped to, to stage something, to make you believe something was away. But it wasn't that way. So, yeah, it's, and with the books, a lot of people say, but what's your source? You know, you can tell somebody the truth and they'll be like, but you need to tell me a source. What they mean is you need to show me a book where the Europeans have wrote it down. And if it ain't in a book by the Europeans, it's not true. And it's like, but what if the Europeans lied? You know, what if those books was to throw us off? And it's like, so where do we go from here? Brother, sometimes you just got to go with your gut feeling on this one. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes you just got to go deep within because, um, you know, a lot of things can't be trusted. But I do believe talking about things, challenging things um, is the best way to get to the answer. Yeah. And I think the best source really comes from within, you know, like trusting your feelings. And I love how like this topic is so closely related to like spirituality and like more deeper things than the surface level, right? Because the worldview that we're being presented is this very empty, like this atheist almost like um, yeah. civilization that we now live in. 
where everything just is surface level. It doesn't go deeper than that. You know, like we built buildings and I think buildings are a perfect representation of that. If you see modern office buildings, like what soul does that building have yeah. in comparison yeah. to one of those buildings with statues and pictures and all this beauty and care that was brought into it. Those were people that had a way deeper and closer connection to, yes. you know, where we are, because where are we really, you know, like, what is this place? Yeah. We yeah. take it for granted. And you can say that to the smallest things. Like, what is a giraffe? Like, yeah. like, like yeah. what even is a giraffe? But we just, yeah. oh, it's a giraffe. Like, you yeah. know, like not even realizing the miracle and the wonder that like yeah. a tree is a gr like grass. We, us humans. And it, it's, it's something we need to get closer to. And I think these theories about history open up the window to this new worldview of us really realizing again who we are and, and what everything is, or at least get closer to it. Yeah, I 100% agree. And um, like I said, I think earlier on in here, that the lie starts from the beginning where they start off with the whole Big Bang thing is because they want you to believe that nothing has a meaning. It's all chaos. It's all chaotic. You're lucky to be here and you're going to be gone any second now. They don't want you to realise like there's a lot more deepness to life that, you know, we've got these spirits, we've got these souls, we're not just the body and we are in tune with nature. And this is why we used to build structures the way we built it. We used to build them on ley lines and special energy grids and because we're energy beings, but they've got us now living in a square box, uh, it's all grey, um, it's lifeless because they want us to be lifeless. So... Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that, that there is so much more meaning to life and to these structures that, that meets the surface. Yeah. yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, this is like, like we said uh, from the very beginning, this is the base level, the foundation, if you will. Yeah. Um, and I think there's so much more you can get into. Like I, I had another point written on here, like fireplaces, for example, you know, like, yeah. about these very specific uh things maybe we can we can we can we can hint at that a little bit and get you know a little yeah. bit more extended knowledge on it yeah and i have a picture of it too but, but then you can explain it maybe a bit better yes in all of these old tartarian buildings um you will see a fireplace like this and we never they never used to um create heat the way we think they was creating heat these fireplaces wasn't used to burn coal or burn wood you know a lot of these fireplaces had pictures directly above so what we now understand is that the tartarians used to be able to harness energy from the ether so on top of these buildings you have these spirals and you have these conductors that was able to harness the natural energy from the ether and with these fireplaces, these fireplaces would actually be connected to those spirals on the top of these buildings. And they was able to produce energy that they was able to transfer into heat. So it's almost like having a negative and a positive charge, like a battery. And that's why you'll always see two pillars. And if you notice, there's two pillars at the front and two pillars at the back. So these buildings, you see them all over, castles, you think, was they really living in these buildings, freezing? And imagine actually built, imagine if this was to be built with uh, wood and coal. You'd be smoking out your whole house. Like, who would really live like this? And they said, yeah, there was chimney sweepers, and but you weren't really using those fireplaces for what they was really used for. A lot of these structures used steam. Um, they used a lot of... Um, What's the word? It's almost like electricity. Um, it's called organ energy. Okay, organ energy. It comes from the name organic and original. Okay, and this organ energy, people can Google this themselves. Google organ energy, people, and you'll see what I'm saying. So, yeah, these fireplaces uh, wasn't used as we know them to be used for. Yeah, and you see, like, even here in this picture, there's, like, Maybe that's shadow from like, you know, from, from this, from this pillar right here, but they usually don't even have burn marks. Yeah. Like why have, and these fireplaces, it's not that 
there's one of them in one room. Like it's not like this is just in a living room. Most rooms have yeah. a fireplace like that. Why? Yeah. Without any burn marks. And this is just the tip of the iceberg to give some, I guess, more background to this. This is the Warden Clive Tower, Warden Cliff Tower, which is Tesla's concept, right? And yeah. Tesla himself said the energy is made of sound, frequency, and vibration, famous quote of his. And he was all about that free energy and that free electricity. And this is just a concept art, of course. But the idea was wireless energy from the ether. And, you know, you can ask yourself why his laboratory was burned down and his works were destroyed. But nonetheless, this is the concept that we're kind of talking about. To just give a little hint at what the Tartarians may have been able to do with their technology and with their way of living and architecture. Absolutely. And you hit a good note on that too. Like everything we said, like take it with a grain of salt and do your own research. Yeah. I think that's the way to really get to revelations when it comes to these things. Yeah. And I guess listening to this is a part of research already. But even just type it in, like, you know, or look at the next time you're in your city, look at that building a little bit more closely with a bit more detail. And you'll see things that were never there before, seemingly. Yeah. Yeah. And as they say, it's all hidden in plain sight. Always is. Definitely. Definitely. All right. I think this was a great way to like introduce the topic a little bit, end it a little bit with something crazy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just get it started. But I think, you know, we want to talk about a, a bit more of these concepts in more greater detail. Yeah, but I think this was uh, a good introduction. Do you have any last words you want to say? Um, nothing really. Just question everything, people, and keep searching. Keep searching. Yeah, exactly. Keep searching and you'll find the light, the truth, whatever you're looking for. Yeah. You're on a great path. Thank you all for watching and uh, we'll see you soon again. Peace. See you soon, friends.